Surfshark is a very common pick for beginners with a low price and an approachable UI, but many still find picking up a totally new app confusing. So today I'll show you how to use Surfshark VPN and its features. And of course, if you don't have a subscription yet, click the link in the description to take advantage of the best deal available. Let's start this Surfshark tutorial with the installation. It's easy on mobiles and Mac OS since it gets a single click. So I'm gonna show you how to set up Surfshark VPN on Windows. It begins with the Surfshark download page. Just click the Windows logo and download the installation file. Just double click the file and as long as you follow the steps, this part won't need a Surfshark tutorial. The good thing is you don't have to worry about device limits. A single Surfshark account is enough for any number of devices. So feel free to share it with your friends or your family or all of them. This is significantly more generous than other top competitors like NordVPN with six or ExpressVPN with five devices per account. Now that you have the app, you need to understand how to use Surfshark. As soon as you launch the app and log in, the easiest way to get a VPN connection going is to use Quick Connect. Just click this button and Surfshark will connect you to the fastest server close to you. But what if you wanna use a specific server? How do you use Surfshark in this case? Well, in this list, you can choose between 100 different countries with 3,200 servers amongst them in total. Keep in mind that each server has a load shown next to the location in the form of a bubble. Look out for full bubbles and prioritize empty ones for optimal performance. Now, it'll show you the country you connected to and your new IP address that's been assigned by Surfshark. If you're not sure if your IP address has changed, let me show you how to use a VPN leak checker. You can find this tool on Surfshark's website and use it to make sure there are no leaks and your IP is changed. Last but not least for this part of the Surfshark VPN tutorial, how do you make sure you have the best speeds? Surfshark should already use WireGuard by default. This is the fastest protocol, but if it's not selected, you can easily change that in the settings. Now that you know how to use Surfshark on PC, or at least its base functions, I bet you'd like to know how do I use Surfshark VPN for streaming? For instance, let's say I wanna to connect to the UK today. So I'll pick a server in the UK with the lowest load, connect and head to the streaming platform of my choice. It could be anything, but let's settle on one example here. It all usually works as well, but if it doesn't, simply refreshing the connection or switching servers does it for me. Usually you'd need good performance to watch shows in high definition. And with Surfshark, I did manage to get good enough speeds to not encounter any issues when streaming. And if you're interested in torrenting as well, Surfshark has no P2P limits whatsoever. Every server can be used to download files through torrents. And in my experience, the Surfshark download speed was good. You can just connect to a server before downloading or set up Bypasser. It's a split tunneling feature and I often use it so that I can browse normally while my torrenting app is connected to a VPN server. That concludes the basic tutorial on how to use Surfshark VPN, but honestly, it has a lot more to offer. Even here on the main screen, you can see options to get multi-hop servers, which reroute connections through two servers in a row for extra security. The static IP feature can give you a permanent IP address, which is pretty good for some websites that track user IPs, like certain streaming platforms, for example. Static IP will reduce your chances of getting banned by such websites. Dedicated IP is a further improvement, giving you an IP address only you can use, which is pretty rare for VPN providers. However, this feature is only available for an extra price, so keep that in mind. So these are the features from the main menu, but in the settings menu, you can enable a couple more. For instance, I use Clean Web to block ads and trackers online, and it even notifies me of malicious websites while I browse. The kill switch is also a must have to make sure your IP is not leaked by accident. It will disable the internet connection in case of VPN failure, preserving your privacy until the connection is restored. Some advanced security features can make your life easier as well. 
If you have to make sure no other devices in your local network will be able to access your files, the invisible on LAN feature can be enabled in one click. And rotating IP will allow you to avoid cross-site tracking by changing your IP without breaking the VPN connection. Finally, the no borders mode is super useful if you live in a country with online censorship or VPN bans, since it will conceal your activity and prevents any attempts to reveal it. During this Surfshark tutorial, you could have noticed that Surfshark has extra tabs on the left. They're dedicated to a paid add-on called Surfshark One. It contains antivirus and a few extra security tools, but I won't go in depth here. Just keep in mind that if you want a decent antivirus without paying for a separate subscription, Surfshark allows you to get one. To sum up this Surfshark VPN tutorial, this is a simple VPN that's easy to pick up with a lot of features being quite straightforward to use. Plus, you should have already noticed short explanations for each feature in the app. Considering that it's also pretty affordable compared to most top grade competitors, Surfshark might be one of the best options for beginners. So if you wanna try it out, I have an exclusive Surfshark coupon code in the description, so go grab it. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate you sticking around. And if you wanna support the channel, leave a like and a subscribe. I release security related content every week and I hope I'll see you in the next video.